Yo! Yo! What's up? I'm Adam. And I'm Amanda. And we are going to look how buttons can improve interactivity and the overall experience of your reports. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, Amanda, we are going to look at buttons. You've got some cool stuff you want to show us yes. to really like just highlight how we can improve the usability of reports, right? Yes, um, definitely. Yeah. What, what's the what's the big reason why you want to do this? What are you seeing? Um, a couple of things. I find that a lot of people they're designing reports and there's a lot of interaction involved in them. And being able to think about that upfront and build really beautiful, easy to use experiences for your consumers is really important for their satisfaction. Um, and also, I've been noticing that whenever I do my monthly videos that I do on the Power BI YouTube channel that I get a lot of questions about how I've built out the reports that I have on, I use it on my videos. Yeah, because they look awesome and the interactivity is really cool. Mm -hmm. and so people want to know, right? All right, enough of all this talking. Let's head over to your computer and see what we got. Yes. Okay, so if anyone watches my monthly video that I do for the Power BI desktop, this report will look very familiar to you. And a lot of people have interest in this left navigation here. This is a navigation element that lets you navigate between the various pages of the report. And everyone always wants to know how it's been built out. And it's actually really easy to do using our buttons feature. So buttons, they are in the top area of the ribbon here. And we have a couple of pre-built-in ones or like with arrows or a back button, things like that. But the most powerful one is this blank one, which Ooh. is what we're using here. Blank in is powerful. Yes. Oh. Yes, it's very powerful because you can make it say whatever you want and do whatever you want. I like that. So each of these is a, a button that was originally blank. And you'll see when building out the visuals, you have the buttons, you have various controls available to you. You can add text to it. So in this case, I have the, the name for each of the pages of my report. So those are text. like the, the premium SKUs, right? P1, P2, P3, no? Okay. No. It's page no. one and page two. Page one, okay. page two. Wrong, wrong P1. You can also, if you want, we have a few built-in icons that you can add to your buttons as well. In my case, I don't want any icons available. I just want the words for each of the pages. And you can also control the outline and the fill. And the nice thing about this is that you can, for each of these controls, you can actually set it for what it looks like just sitting on the report and also the hover and pressed state for the button as well. So you can see here that for each of these buttons, there is a hover state available. So as I hover over it, it darkens up, which lets me know, indicates to me that I can actually click on it. And whenever I press down on one of the buttons, it turns blue, oh. which you know gives me a nice feeling as I'm interacting with the report, letting me know like, hey, yes, this was a button and I pressed it. And so you can design your buttons with each of these three different states to make it really feel like it's not just like something static on the report, it's really highly interactive. And once you've designed how your buttons look, it's actually really easy to also set up that navigation effect as well. So all that the buttons are doing are referencing bookmarks. So if I select the one that's going to go to page two, I'll see that this action card is turned on and that's where you set up what any button is going to do when it's clicked on. So, so are bookmarks the key, like the magic sauce of how this works? In this case, yes. Okay. Buttons can do more than point to bookmarks. Okay. They can also open up a Q and A dialogue or go to a web URL anywhere. In, right. on the internet yeah. but um, in this case bookmarks are the magic sauce nice and so all you have to do is take a bookmark for each of the different pages so I'm going to, go to page two I can go and open up my bookmarks pane and take a bookmark for that page and something a lot of people don't know is that bookmarks of course they know that bookmarks can you know says a lot of interesting stuff about the report cross highlighting filter states if something's visible or not, it has a lot of power behind it, but you can control what that bookmark is uh, saving at any okay. given time. So I can, in this case, I just want to use the bookmarks for navigation. So I'm going to open for that bookmark, 
turn off the data related stuff. Okay, so that part right there, and I've had this conversation with a few customers, that part is key because some people yes. you get into this funky state of, whoa, I, I hit this button or whatever, and like all of a sudden all my slicers like changed, changed on, on me. me. Yes. And that's, yeah. yes, so this will allow you to make sure that when you move to the next page, it's not also changing the filter statement right. that it uses. It's just changing the the page. And yes. so the same with the display. Display is things like, uh, we have a feature called spotlighting, which dims everything else that's included in display. And also visibility is included in display. So I'm going to turn those off as well. So now this bookmark is solely moving between the pages. That's nice. And then I can go back over to the first page. And for this button, I'll make sure that in the action card, I am referencing a bookmark and I can pick the bookmark I just added as its navigation point. And when I click on it, it moves me to that page. Nice. And so all you have to do is set up a bookmark per page of your report and tie it to a button for each of those pages. Awesome. What if I have a hundred pages? Maybe not. Maybe you shouldn't include a hundred pages in your report. Okay. But Maybe that's a discussion for another yeah, time. Yeah, that's so, another video, okay. I think. All right. All right. Just asking. Just asking. <laughs> All right, so that's awesome. So page navigation is cool. Yes. How do, how do we take this to the next level? Because we like to do that on Guy in a Cube. Well, if you take the same concepts that we I showed here for page navigation, you can also do something similar to have elements change within your report um, as users click on things. Ooh. So if I jumped to another page, you can see in this report that I have here that I have these cards showing different information and you know like how many leads do i have how are my profile views happening on my social media account uh, i have all these different cards that show information and cards generally are static you know you can't yep. click on them they don't yep. do anything so why don't we take advantage of that and make these into interactive elements you can do that you can Ooh. so i have all my cards and all i did was i layered a button <sighs> on top of it this is the that magic of the blank button yes right okay. yes it's blank like it this. has nothing visible to it and if i open up the formatting pane and, and so to be clear the buttons that we saw for the page navigation those were blank also but we added text, text to, to them. them yes yes okay. In so we're case, still using blank. Yes, yeah, okay. so we're using blank, but text is off in this case because I want it to be transparent. There's no outline. Uh, the only fill is on hover. So you can see oh. that whenever, if I go into here, the there's a transparency to the fill as well. And it gets, it changes based off of if I'm hovering on oh, the card nice. or not. Again, it gives you that nice ability to make things actually feel interactive by taking advantage of that hover state. Nice. And in this case... We're again linking to bookmarks, but the bookmark is actually changing the visual that I'm seeing to the right. And so each of these cards is a different metric. Mm. And I want to be able to switch the visual to show that metric that I just clicked on. Got it. And so again, each of these buttons is just pointing to a bookmark that is changing the visibility. Nice. There's many visuals layered there. Yep. I'm hiding and showing them. Nice. That's, that's tricky. That is a tricky thing. And it really can improve like what we can actually show because i know a lot of folks will be like how do i change accesses dynamically mm -hmm, on the exactly. reporter how do i get that different state and feel and this is a great way yes. to great way to go about doing it all right so i know like doing this with bookmarks i've done this myself i've seen other folks do it and sometimes you may get into trouble just because you're dealing with these layers yes. and things can get kind yeah, of wonky of, a little bit lots of things on top of how each would other. how would you if you're doing this and you get frustrated because of layering what's a quick way that we can go and fix that so we have in power bi we built in the selection pane and this pane is incredibly useful you can see here it lists everything that you have in this report for uh in the Z order that you that the things are. So you can see here that you know this button is on top and as you click it, it will select the object on the canvas as well so you nice. can see where it is. And the things at the top of the pane are higher up in the Z order and you can just drag them around to change the yep. ordering as well. Nice. This is also where you change the visibility of things yep. as well. So if you can't find something, always open up the selection pane and yes. you can see if there's any hidden objects yep. on the page. And if you need to, just for keeping track of it, I believe we just had a recent thing that went in where you can just double click and change the title. Yes, it, yes. So so for uh, this case, this button is just named a button because it doesn't have a title. Yeah, because that's so to you know, descriptive. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very helpful. So I could just double click here nice. and change it to search button. Yep. 
And if I do this nice. for my all of the objects on my page, it will become a lot easier to manage. Yes, that is. Yes, awesome. We want to pass this off to the viewers. What do you? What question do you have for them? So we are thinking a lot about all these different interaction methods with the with reporting, and so you've seen how we've designed some stuff for our reports. I would love to know after you've seen this, are you guys doing something similar? Are there different? interaction methods you're building into your reports, we would love to know what you're trying to do so we can make it easier. Yep, just leave that down in the comments below and let us know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick, myself, and Amanda, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.